أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم اما بعد all praises are due to allah we thank him we praise him and we believe in him testifying that there is no deity worthy of worship except for allah and that Muhammad is his handpicked messenger who has been sent for the goodness of mankind may the peace mercy and blessing of allah be upon rasulullah and whoever follows him towards righteousness until the day of qiyam amma ba'd today's khutbah is on the qualities and characteristics of a mu'min when we say a mu'min what we mean is a true believer there is a difference between a muslim and a mu'min In a hadith someone came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked a very important question he said ya rasulullah how will i know that i have become a mu'min a believer rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered when your heart feels satisfied because of any of your good act and when you mourn about any of your wrong doing then know that you have become a true muslim In other words a true muslim is a true believer. How do I know that I'm a muslim or a mu'min a true believer? The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if your heart is satisfied if you are happy after having accomplished some goodness in doing good and if you feel sad by committing a sin then know that you are a true believer. Mune be mune mune ba tandilan tela ko nte mu liman ya multi mi ya lonko ala liman ya sika sekata la koto kila kay ko ning ayatare la junube kol wala ila ku kendol ni yake i hakilo katenkum in ikan ni dia sotoje 
ila bara kurungol ni yake ika ni ku ya sotoje ni futata o makamoto alonko woto ite mulimani ya mwono wala ila limani ya timmata wa tabaraka Allah actually to both of us the terms are alike for us is though a mu'min and a muslim are the same but they are different muslim is a person who embraces islam a muslim is someone who embraces islam ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah whereas a person becomes a mu'min when this knowledge penetrates deep into his mind and his heart and soul as a muslim as a mu'min the quality part of the quality of a mu'min is he lives his life according to the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam without editing anything Allah azza wa jalla told us in the quran about the qualities of a believer a proper muslim a dutiful muslim a mu'min for that matter he said innama al mu'minuna alladhina idha dhukira Allah wajilat qulubuhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadatuhum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun alladhina yuqimuna as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun ulaika humul mu'minuna haqqa lahum darajatun 'inda rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun karim Allah said innama al mu'minuna alladhina idha dhukira Allah wajilat qulubuhum the believers are those who when Allah is mentioned they feel a fear in their hearts and when his verses are recited unto them they in, they, it increases them in faith niko ala ko kila ko akela limani alafa wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun and they put their trust in Allah who is the believer who perform as salah performing salah on time sincerity devotion nothing and no one should stop the believer from from performing salah on time no wonder allah said in the quran who are real men are rijal la tulhihim tijaratun wala bay'un an dhikrillah wa iqamis salah real men are those neither merchandise buying and selling the 12 hours work or whatever engagement we have real men are those whom neither merchandise and buying and selling does not distract from the remembrance of Allah wa iqami salah and establishing salah performing salah five times a day with sincerity and devotion for the sake of Allah why are they so occupied in this because they fear a day when eyes and hearts will be overturned when we stand before Allah having that fear because of that they perform salah on time with sincerity and devotion it is they who are the true believers ulaika humul mu'minuna haqqa for them are the grades of dignity with their lord and for the forgiveness and generous provision which is jannah it is clear from these verses that the qualities of a true muslim are mentioned in this verse one is when allah is mentioned they feel the fear in their hearts their faith increases every time they hear and ponder over the quran any time the quran is being recited they remember allah and they get connected they put their trust in allah and allah said wa man yatawakkal ala allah fa huwa hasbu whoever puts his trust in allah allah suffices him in everything and everywhere when in your dealings with humanity put your trust in allah allah said you will find me by you in your provision i want something to survive allah said put your trust in me and i would look after business no wonder the prophet said if we have the iman and the trust in allah that the bird has allah will provide for us as he does with a bird who lives with an empty stomach and come back with a full stomach and allah said wa man yatawakkal ala allah fa huwa hasbu among the qualities of a believer brothers and sisters is to be sincere whatever you do let it be for the sake of allah ask yourself am i doing it for the sake of allah or am i doing it for show sure? satan will never let you go so before starting anything or before going anywhere ask yourself why am i going if the intention is not right refresh before leaving 
munatu nankata nyimbe ngoto why am i about i'm dipping my hand in my pocket why am i doing it who am i giving it to but why at that beginning it might be you're doing it for sure if that's the case change your mind refresh your intention and if you are sure now it is for the sake of allah don't let go in the middle of it shaitan will come again and try to change your intention halfway into it ask yourself why am i doing it if satan is still there take him out and say it's for allah after having accomplished whatever you were about to do or we are you were going to do ask yourself after having completed what i have been doing who is it for because shaitan towards the end will still come so long as you have not accomplished until the deed goes to allah shaitan will never relax so before the start of anything let the intention be right in the middle of it let the intention be right after accomplishing everything let the intention be right for the sake of allah so serve allah <clears throat> serve allah being sincere to him in obedience wa abdullah mukhlisin lahu ad-din only for allah don't add anything or anyone to it allah said in the quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu you who said you have iman lima taquluna ma la tafa'alu why do you say things that you don't do kabura maqtan inda allah it is indeed a grave sin in the eyes of allah an taqulu ma la taf'alun for you guys to be saying things that you wouldn't be doing i'm coming and you you know you're not coming i will do it knowing you won't do it so who, who are you saying it for is it for allah is it for sure and the prophet said whoever does anything for sure on the day of qiyamah is guilty of shirk and about it allah said i can forgive everything except shirk momo yeku ke nyin kamma pour ka fan ni tandi molla ma ke ala kamma kila ko on the day of qiyamah you are guilty of shirk that is how a species your shirk is like a black ant on a black stone and black am am rock underneath the earth in the darkness it will be very hard to see that ant it is that is how hard it is to differentiate between shirk and that which is not shirk allah said in the quran wo to those who pray wa wailun lil musallin alladhina hum an salatihim sahun those who are heedless of their prayers alladhina hum yuraun those who do good to be seen Imagine Allah said for while a well in Jahannam called while is prepared for those who pray five times a day unless if the prayers is sincere for the sake of Allah but alladhina hum an salatihim sahun those who are heedless of their prayers nim futa da soko na ben na julol jolal suma ege ker dina fay body that is being heedless alladhina hum yuraun those who pray in order to be seen but not only prayers those who do or perform acts of de- uh, good deeds just to be seen by people nim mim ma fo ite contan la yena ni ku ya soto allah ko wailun lil musalli a place in jahannam called wail is a is a well that even jahannam prayed and said ya allah save us from well from wail imagine a well in jahannam called wail jahannam in itself is asking allah to save him from while allah said that while is prepared for those who pray those who are heedless of their prayers those who show off when they pray another quality of a believer is that a true muslim always remembers allah all the time all the time without fail alladhina amanu wa tatma'inna qulubuhum bi dhikrillah ala bi dhikrillah tatma'inna alqulub those who have iman whose hearts are assured by the remembrance of allah unquestionably by the remembrance of allah hearts get satisfaction if you want to be happy without any balance in your pocket or at the account if you want to be happy living in a mud house constantly remember allah azza wa jalla without a bank balance you will be very happy without any food you will be very happy without even a bicycle you'll be very happy without anything on the face of this earth that people find happiness in you will be happy but without the zir- zikr of allah azza wa jalla allah will make life so tight that with even a billion pounds you will still be suffering 
you will always be angry. Your bank balance will be very healthy. You will have all forms of clothing, but you will not be happy. At night, when the poor man is snoring, you will be struggling to have two hours sleep. It is sad to say, but there are people who are already addicted to um, painkillers. There are people who are already addicted to um, um, sleeping tablets. They are multimillionaires, but they cannot buy that peace of mind in order to be able to sleep, a sound sleep. Even though you have others that are being bitten by mosquitoes, but they are still snoring. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma innil quloob. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever sits and does not mention the name of Allah will find it a cause and sorrow from Allah. And whoever lies down to sleep and does not mention the name of Allah before rising up will find it as a cause of sorrow from Allah. Abu Dawud. Kila ko momo sita imang ala tofo. Wale be bengoto imam mari man sata la tofo. Ase ke ni musoti ani halakoti yom al kiyam. Momo tate la ining ala to me la imang ala to finkong. Ime la at least dua nyan minyan take la jandi be la la. Ase ke ni musoti ani masi bo yom al kiyam. Yon te bine kep kutok chi jotay. Fatele wu kulo fa yalla bespenja dinala nekal musibate din korechu. Kep kui teda. Sabalu lo turi yalla. Ding chi jele musiba te din korechu. No wonder the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after every gathering, however short or long that gathering is, he would conclude that gathering by saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. It is said that when this dua is mentioned, in any gathering that you have attended, any sin that is committed by the grace of Allah will be forgiven. The mistakes that might have been committed in that gathering, before leaving that gathering, if you say Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, your sins will be forgiven. So we should make it a routine to remember Allah every time. Even when we are having fun, we can, when we remember Allah, we, 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 we get blessed. Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he looks at himself in the mirror, he makes a dua. Allahumma. أحسن تخلقي فأحسن خلقي وأوسي علي في رزقي يا الله اللهم أو يا الله my lord أحسن تخلقي you have made my creation beautiful فأحسن خلقي I want you and I'm praying that you make my character great and beautiful وأحسن وأوسي علي في رزقي يا الله and increase my provision سبحان الله ماري من ستلا يندرنيا يا نيندي just by looking at the mirror. That's the dua of the prophet. Anytime he looks at the mirror, imagine doing that all the time. Did making a dua before entering the house, making the dua before leaving the house. The prophet said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Is a cure for 99 disease, the list of which is cure. It, it cures stress. 99 disease. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah is a cure for 99 disease. The list of what it cures is stress. Then you have number two up to number 99. And people are committing um, suicide because they have a stressful life. The, Rep the Prophet said there are two phrases, very light for the tongue to utter. But very heavy on the balance in the eyes of Allah. And it is very loved by Ar Rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa adhim. Done. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa adhim. Very light. The Prophet said it's very light. And rightly so, within a second. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa adhim. Very light. Very heavy on the balance. A day when neither wealth will benefit you. When Allah says this is the balance. Ya Allah, I have a billion pound. Have it? No. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ It's a day where neither wealth nor children will avail the individual except the one who comes to Allah with a clean heart. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ دَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ
ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اما بعد brothers and sisters another quality of a believer a true believer a mu'min is being straightforward in deeds and actions Allah said in the Quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin O you who have iman O you who believe in Allah fear Allah and be with and be with those who are true in words and deeds Again Allah Azza wa Jalla narrate am um, said in verse and uh, in chapter 4 verse 135 be maintainers of justice and bearers of true witness to for Allah even if it be the truth is going to be against you your own self your parents or your relatives or someone rich or poor Allah said stand up to the truth whether it is going to be against you or your parents or your relatives or the rich I am dealing with the rich man against the poor let me favor the rich man against the poor man so that he would give me something later on Allah said fear Allah Allah said fear Allah there would come a day that you would dance to the tune if at all that's the case the quranic verse direct us to um to make the habit of being candid in our behavior this straightforwardness should not be only confined to speaking alone but it must be an ongoing process throughout our relationship with others being honest let's fulfill the promise and always stand for justice there is no room for hypocrisy in islam allah said in the quran innal munafiqina fi darkil asfali minan nar the the the, the munafiq the hypocrites they will form the base of jahannam so there is no room for hypocrisy <coughs> part of hypocrisy is that I will, when i promise i will fail when i speak to you i tell a lie when there is a covenant between the two of us i break that covenant whoever has these qualities has the quality of hypocrisy may allah azza wa jalla save us from that inshallah <laughs> a true mu'min should be should adopt simplicity in his life Allah man la fi warola yalla bugut ko rey Allah has two ropes the upper one and the lower one if you lower yourself for the sake of Allah he pulls you up if you try to show off Allah azza wa jalla pulls you down to an extent that you will not even be heard of your purpose will be defeated one of the finest qualities of a true believer is living a simple and plain life The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always had a simplest living style and never craved for having luxuries and materialistic gains despite being the messenger of Allah despite the fact that Allah even asked him if you want I will turn the whole of man Uhud into gold for you the prophet said ya Allah no I want to behave like a slave and if I'm in need I would beg and pray and cry so that you can give in other words i don't want that speciality no wonder he would go days on end without food or drink there was a day abu huraira ta found the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the masjid praying while he was sitting down then abu huraira said ya rasulullah why are you sitting down praying the prophet said abu huraira i'm sitting down praying because of hunger i cannot stand Imagine we are we are fasting but at least we can stand. If we continue fasting tomorrow for 20 um, 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 another 48 hours we can still stand. Now you can imagine how hungry the prophet was. He said Abu Huraira for the past 72 hours for the past 3 days nothing entered my mouth that's why I couldn't stand. It's not that he is tired if he were to stand he would have fallen down. Abu Huraira started crying. Then he said Abu Huraira don't cry I have been promised by Allah Azza wa Jalla that those who suffer hunger for the sake of Allah on this earth on the day of qiyamah they will never be hungry again inshallah and that goes without saying when we are hungry for the sake of Allah by fasting on the day of qiyamah no one will be suffering inshallah so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived his entire life and he suffered there was a day qab came to the masjid and saw that he has changed color He was so pale. And he said, "Ya Rasulullah, you have changed color." He said because of hunger. 
for three days I've not eaten anything. Kaab went and did some labor work and came back to the prophet. After giving him something to eat in a form of death or something like that, the prophet said, Kaab, do you love me? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm ready to sacrifice my, 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 my parents for you. That's just a saying, meaning I love you beyond imagination. He said, do you really mean that you love me? Because many a time people would say, hey, That's very common. Then he's asking, are you really so that you love me? After having done that for him. And that's, that, that's without doubt. But he still needed confirmation. Kaab, do you really love me? And are you sure about this statement? He said, Ya Rasulullah, yes, without doubt. Without an iota of a doubt. He said, if at all that is true, you really love me, then be prepared for hardship. Because for those who love me, they will always be visited by hardship. <laughs> because that is the pathway he chose. That is the pathway he chose. Inna Allah has tara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. Allah has changed. He wants to give us jannah, but in return, he wants us to make sacrifice. Every hardship we have to endure in order to have jannah. Because jannah is not meant for lazy people. So we need to exercise simplicity, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Part of it, go, it goes to, to say, like, um, remembering the advice of um, 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 Luqman, in Surah Luqman, when he said to his son, Ya Buna, he said, وَلَا تُسَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْسِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ he said, and do not turn your cheek in contempt towards people. And do not walk through the earth exultantly. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone self-deluted and boastful. Now, the above-mentioned ayah indicates that a true Muslim should never show hatred towards others. He should never show hatred towards anyone. Avoid arrogance and pride for they are some of the negative attributes of a person who are disliked by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Again, Allah said in the Quran, Do not ascribe purity for yourselves. Allah knows who is the righteous one. Can you tell man my wajah? Niko alanya sila na mo ntelem ala koko kana wakere kake fan seni yandi ntele alo minsila ta alala kaka aje ko itele mo itele be molbe nyato alanya sila ngon ala koko ntele alo ite malo bulfo ne fi man ma fi genara galiala yala ne bulje malaba balsa boba don't try to purify yourself I know who fears me I know who fears me Another quality of a believer, brothers and sisters, is the attitude of the, the forgiving attitude. Being, being ready to forgive every time, without condition. I don't even know, the, I don't even want to know the magnitude of his crime. I have forgiven him for the sake of Allah. If at all you are given to this attitude, you will be very special in the eyes of Allah. Allah said in the Quran, Pardon and overlook their faults. Do you not love that Allah Azza wa Jalla should forgive you? Allah said, if at all people do wrong to you, forgive them and overlook their faults. It is as if I'm saying to Allah, no, yeah, Allah, I can't do that. Then in return, Allah said, don't you want me to forgive you? Yamfu mwoliye bang. Alantake nola. Foyman lafinte alaye yamfuye. Ahakany wato yamfu mwoliye. Jegalan nini yalla ah biki di madef da farai ana bu guloma jegalla ah hakan kon jegalan nini jegalan nini if we forgive forget and overlook allah azza wa jalla will forgive and for overlook all our sins more so in this ramadan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has encouraged us to be to be saying so many istighfar in this ramadan an la ilaha illallah and asking for jannah and asking allah azza wa jalla to keep us away from jahannam the Prophet again, Allah Azza wa Jalla said in chapter 3, verse 134, that the dutiful people, the dutiful ones, they are the, the, they are the ones who restrain their anger and they pardon people. If they are angry, they control themselves and they forgive after that anger. And they, Allah loves those who do good 
Again, Allah said, the recompense of evil is punishment like it. Yembusa ngebusa, yen tulubu ngetulubu. Nga dorma mafeko. That's it. The, puni the, the recompense of evil is punishment like it. But the verse further went on to say, but whoever forgives, whoever forgives and amends, in other words, you have, you have attacked me, I have a right to hit back an eye for an eye. But then again, if at all I forgive and make amendments, Allah Azza wa Jalla promises me reward. And the greatest reward for forgiving and overlooking is Jannah. He said his reward is with Allah. Whoever is patient and forgives, that matter is a great resolution. That is a great resolution. It takes an arm and a leg to forgive, forget, and overlook, even though you are in a state to revenge. So brothers, any time we are tested, our resolution should be, we have to go back to Allah and realize that by forgiving, Allah Azza wa, Azza wa Jalla will forgive. There was a crime, an allegation, on the wife of the Prophet Aisha radiallahu anha, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the closest friend of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even wanted to take revenge <coughs> against an individual he was feeding, and said from now on, he alleged a lie against my daughter and the wife of the Prophet. Now the food that I used to give him, I'm not giving anymore. Then Allah, being the friend of Rasulullah and of course Abu Bakrin, still asked Abu Bakr to forgive, forget and overlook. He asked, that's when this verse was revealed, forgive, forget and overlook. Those who are given means, do not hold back simply because someone does wrong. Forgive, forget and overlook. If you've been helping them, carry on helping. Honey, forgive, forget, and overlook for the sake of Allah. Why were you giving that depends? So as to be praised? No, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. Now, whether you say thank you or not, whether you appreciate it or not, whether you went around the corner and start backbiting me or not, I will still do it because you're not, you can't pay. You are very poor. Antumul fuqarao ilallah. Wallahu huwa al hamid. You are all poor in the eyes of Allah. Allah is the all rich, worthy of all praises. So brothers and sisters, let's forgive, forget, and overlook each other's salt, more so in Ramadan. If we cannot make amends now, it will be very hard. Today is the ninth of Ramadan. It is very sad. Sad in the sense that nine days have gone. Everyone should say that I've not done much. Now for the 21 days that I, I have, I will double my efforts. Whatever I have missed, I will double. Ever since Ramadan started, there are people who have already finished the Quran three times. If you have not finished one, say to yourself, I'm lacking behind. If you don't even know how to read the Quran, say to yourself, I'm still lacking behind. I need to compete. The next 10 days, I will make so. If at all I'm a fluent reader, for the sake of Allah, I will recite the Quran twice within the next 10 days. Let that be your target. Aim high. Let the sky be the beginning, not the end. May Allah make it easy for us, inshallah. In our next khutbah, we will continue on the qualities of the believers. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina wa shirif anna sharra ma qadayt, fa inna ka taqdi wa la yukda alayt, inna hu la yazidu man wa alayta wa la yaizzu man aadayt, la barakta rabbana wa ta'alayt, nastaghfiruka min kulli dhanbin wa natubu ilayk, wa nu'minu bika wa natawakkalu alayk, wa nuzni alayka al khayra kulla, ya man yujiru wa la yujaru alayhi ajirna min النار ومن خزي النار ومن كل عمل يقربنا إلى النار ولكن الجنة ما الأبرار يا أزيز يا جبار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يدكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وأقيموا الصلاة